Hello and welcome! You know me as Iceman from the Foxmark forum, as one of administrators. I also have a popular fork which you might have heard of. It's called the Iceman fork. Today I have been invited by Lab 401 Academy to do a series of tutorials on how to use a Proxmark device. Let's get started. What will I talk about in this episode? Well, the first part is about getting used to the low frequency part of a Proxmark client. And for this, you need your Proxmark and you will need to have um, an updated firmware. I'm going to use the latest Proxmark official firmware 301 with the latest commits from the official repo. And you can find it on GitHub. Just git pull and it will be fine. You compile and flash it up. So, I start with client. You can see which version I'm doing from the firmware. And uh, it's easy to get intimidated when you see this the first time. You don't know what to do when you press enter and nothing happens. And what you do need to do is to press like H and you get some help text out, which is quite useful. The LF part in the Proxmark client is focused towards two major command sets and the low LF and the data commands. There's a lot of commands which target different brands of known low frequency cards and systems to make it easy dealing with such cards and you find them usually underneath the LF. And then there is commands which focuses on analyzing and processing the raw low frequency signal collected and that would be the data part. Which you see like this. It's a lot of text and a lot of commands. So yes. First thing out what you really need to do is to figure out what your antenna is like. And that's a command called HW tune. You press enter and it starts measuring. Here we go. When you see it's finished, and the new windows pops up. This is called the plot window, and this is called the overlays window. The overlays window is not what you're going to use very much in the beginning, but it's kind of easier for you if you like click and, and drag and drop and stuff like that. The text saying that your uh, L low frequency antenna is, is uh, tuned into a specific value is shown in the client and you'll be looking at the 125 kilohertz or the 134 kilohertz frequency which we have here is 21 voltage and 46 voltage which is decent and you can see also in data plot which you know where the spike is in the antenna which is kind of nice when it comes to commands, the proximal client is kind of nice to a certain degree on figuring out which command you try to enter. You can shorten commands and use small letters. And when you read forum posts, you see it a lot. So for instance, instead of writing LF search, you'll see it LFSEH. Like this. Neat, isn't it? Same thing with data plot window to hide it and uh, to show it. You can write both ways. And it enters again. Get to know those short commands and you don't have to write them type so much. Very easy. Now the next thing is to do is to understand the help text. There are more and more commands that implement the help text parameter H or uh, dash 8. Uh, it is not unified in the commands so well in the, in the Proxmark client because it's been developed over several, several years with different ways of uh, doing it. So, but most of them has some kind of help text. So if you go into a, a vid, you get more more text for the sub commands you enter. And you go for read, or clone, and you enter the H parameter, you see you get a help text. None of them all has it, but most of them has it, and, and you can read more about it. It's 
you know, get to learn the, the H parameter to, you know, to see what to do it. Now that you got yourself a little bit, you know, into the commands, I will show you the, the simplest first commands for low frequency analyzing. So you got some tags. And what you first do, you put your uh, tag on the antenna, the low frequency antenna, and you enter LF search. And it tries to find, it tries to automatically gather a signal trace from the antenna into a device, and from the device it tries to download and demodulate it and decode it. And also in the end tries to identify which system the tag belonged to. Low frequency card is usually kind of simple tags, so for instance like this one here we found an EM401 tag which usually comes with a set when you buy a Proxmark. And you can see if you go for another one, you see it found a hid prox tag. And another thing with a client is that you can also go for up arrows and down arrows to you know, go previous commands and back and forth in the command list, which will also help you save your time from writing a lot of commands. You also saw that the data plot window is something that you can open up and go down with. You have to be a little bit comfortable with the data plot window. With the up and down arrows, you zoom in or you zoom out. And if you zoom very, very much, you can see it become, becomes blue there. And if you go in there, scroll to it, and you see that the blue line actually represents the demodulated data bits where, where we found this tag in the signal from the card and how it looks like. So the data plot window will help you a lot of figuring out things, which leads us automatically into the next steps. From LF search command, you have um, where it does it automatically, you can actually just go for the LF read command instead, which just reads and gather the, the signal from the antenna. And it automatically loads the samples from the device into the plot window and you can look at it like this. And here is the neat thing. Once you collected a tag and you don't know how to use it, you want to share it with someone on the forum maybe. And this is where the data save command comes into. Where it saves the data trace. You can also load this trace. Let's swap tags to another one. And I do like this. Here's a different tag. Save. I'm using the PM3 file extension, so we know it's a signal trace. Please do that as well. We can also do and do the data load instead now. Remember to do that. So this is how you share data traces. Save it down. Maybe you have only access to the, the tag for a while. You make a trace and you can look at it and analyze it in offline mode for the longer run. To recap a some bit here, you have the LF search command, which tries to find and decode and demodulate the signal for you, and identify it. You have the LF read command, which gather the trace from the device and to the client. You have a data plot window, which you can look at the trace. You have data load to load up a trace, which you've saved before, and you have data saved to save down the traces. Once you have a trace and you can look at things in the data plot window, you can start acting with the other data command sets where you can uh, apply different demodulation tries, you know, in, in order to figure out what is the actual data the tag is sending out. But that will be for another time, for the next episode, by the way. This is not going to be a, such a long episode, so I'm going to end here and basically what you have now is you have learned some basic commands for low frequency, so let's put them to use, you know. With your Proxima kit, you got about three LF tags. Take each one of them and put on antenna, run the LF search on every tag. Did you find it and identify it? 
see the data plot window, look at the signal, zoom in, zoom out, run LF search, see what happens. And, you know, and you're ready to start understanding how to demodulate a signal. And then we come into things like ASK, FSK, and PSK, which is amplitude shifting keys and frequency shifting keys and uh, phase shifting keys and more of those things. But that's later on, you know. There is, with the, if you download the, the fork from the repo uh, from GitHub, you will find that there are saved traces on there. You can just go into data, load, two dots, which means upper level, traces, press tab, and then press tab twice again, and you see which more you have. Let's go for IO prox. We load up this one. You see how the signal changed here in the data trace window, or the data plot window. And I will show you this one in search. No, that wasn't the card, sorry. That was bad. <laughs> Let's load it up again. And then let search. And we H. And we here we see there's an option here which says use data from graph buffer and search for known tags. Or reading data from tag. We will try to use the loaded data instead, which we load now with data load. And we run the LF search on it. And voila, it found the IO prox signal. It's kind of fun this way is because you can look at several different demodulations and you can you know use sharing traces when you see a trace on the forum you can download it and you can have it here now that would be all for me for this time hey guys this is fabrice from lab onecom thank you for watching this video if you found it interesting make sure to like it share it and subscribe to our channel and last but not least visit lab onecom to get the best price on the best genuine pen testing tools and of course where you can find updates about our new tutorials. And remember that at Lab 401, pen testing is our career. Cheers guys, see you next time.